People of God, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome to this Palm Sunday service broadcast from the Ridgemount United Church in Cool Cool Mandeville, Jamaica, West Indies. I invite you all that are tuned in to participate as best you can in our singing and in our reflections. Good to have you all tuned in and listening to this program. We hope you will be blessed. And by all means, continue to keep safe at home. Our call to worship. Rejoice greatly, people of God. Shout in triumph. Believers in Christ, look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, riding on a donkey, even on a donkey's colt. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our opening praise, how great thou art.
Let us pray. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week and gather at your house of prayer, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem, to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that united with Christ and all the faithful, we may one day enter in triumph the city not made by human hands, the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ, lives in glory forever. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, in keeping with our tradition, where our children have a special slot on this service, we invite you to join in singing the children's song, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. A reading from the Word of God, written in Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 
to 46. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near and the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. You are our strength and our redeemer. The coronavirus is fast becoming a bad dream or a horror movie than what wishes to go away. However, the reality is that this virus is real and it will not disappear soon enough. Even with our testing situation in Jamaica, many countries in Europe, Asia, Africa, South and North America, and the United States in particular are caught unprepared with insufficient critical beds, masks, gowns, gloves, and ventilators. COVID-19, this deadly unseen respiratory disease, has changed our language, our relationships, and general lifestyle. Wash hands, we are told. Do it thoroughly and regularly. Stay home. Practice social distance. These are our new routine. I would prefer to speak of physical distance. Social relationships call for looking about the well-being of each other. And this should not be compromised. Social distancing should therefore not lead to the weakening of the building of social relationships in times of national crisis. In the midst of this global pandemic and the resultant national crisis, it brings the church and the people of God around the world together and we at Ridgemount Congregation, we are not close. The membership is redeployed as disciples in our homes, which is really the first church. During times of catastrophe, bad religion can become a deadly poison.
that thrives by promising easy and instant answers when we are facing difficulties that seem so overwhelming. Therefore, believers should be careful though, of bad preachers who come with fake answers how to deal with this crisis. Believers with itchy ears and without discerning hearts can become easily deceived by corrupt leaders seeking economic empowerment at the cost of their health. So with this mandatory physical distancing, the work of the church, as with other work, becomes profoundly challenging. The church is expected to provide pastoral care through visitation, conducting the business of a congregation, gathering and sharing of resources, conducting evangelism, worship, preaching. Yet, physical distancing calls for us to find fresh ways. The experience of trauma with COVID-19 is something else. Trauma refers to the circumstances in which one's life or the life of a loved one is under threat where one loses a loved one suddenly and when the ability to process the experience is exceeded by the magnitude of the experience itself we are at a time when we along with others in our communities we need to deal with trauma in varying ways with diverse levels of resilience. So resiliency is going to be very important in this period, keeping us with our ability to withstand, to adapt, and in a qualified sense to bounce back and experience renewed strength. On this Palm Sunday, which is also called Passion Sunday, the Gospel from Matthew 26 speaks of Jesus' passion or his preparation for suffering and death. This is quite timely because it speaks to us individually and as a family, as a nation, and as a, the world together. How do we prepare for our own suffering? And when the time comes, our own death. The number of persons who are hospitalized those that are dying from this pandemic, we need to serve as comforters. And we have been conned by modern science to believe that technology knows all the answer and that we would have eradicated all these respiratory diseases but the fragility of humanity has been widely exposed. The authorities falsely thought that they had everything under control. Now they are discovering that the emperor has no clothes on. COVID-19 has brought us down to reality about the chanciness of human life and the precarious nature of human existence. This is indeed a wake-up call to the risky world in which we live. We are here today and gone, not tomorrow, later today. Jesus began his time of suffering during the Jewish Passover season as he made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem on a donkey with the crowd shouting, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, the pandemic that Jesus faced during his time was not a coronavirus. It was not COVID-19, rather. It was corrupt governance, corrupt institutions in religion and in politics, institutions that deny the people fullness of life, 
by the end of the week, Jesus was crucified on a cross. He was falsely charged by corrupt institutions that misused the courts to, de to deliver unjust conviction, followed by torture, humiliation, and crucifixion. Indeed, his disciples all ran away and they had to stay a safe distance in their homes. The passion of Jesus is indeed a, a familiar story for suffering peoples around the world. COVID-19 is our current example of facing up to these realities of suffering peoples, those in refugee camps, when we tell people that they must go home and stay home, which home do these people go to? People who sleep on the streets, as we would have seen on the television, those in India, when you tell street people to go home, what, where is home? What is home? It seems like home is a place for the privilege. When the reality of his impending denial by his own colleagues, friends, his disciples, betrayal and suffering. When these struck home, what awaited him in the week ahead? Jesus, who had asked his disciples just to stay up for just a little while, but like many Jamaicans, they had dropsy. They could not keep their eyes open. Jesus, as he prayed, he stated, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. This sounds so much like the suffering peoples going through with COVID-19. Overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of even death. He had to face up to the hardest thing he would ever face. And so it is with COVID-19 on this Passion Sunday. It has turned our world upside down. Persons who were spared suffering before now must confront the harsh reality of the inescapable community and personal suffering. It's not one person who will suffer. If one person suffer, we are all going to suffer. We are in this thing together. What is more painful than having difficulty breathing? with an infectious disease? What is more painful than being in a hospital isolated and you don't have your loved one to even come and say hi? What is it like to be near the point of death and not to have those whom you love gather around you? And as for those who are left behind, seeing their loved ones who have died and are not even allowed to go to the church or even to the cemetery to say goodbye. Theologian by the name of Tim Kelly in his book, Walking with God Through Pain and Suffering States, no matter what precaution we take, no matter how well we have put things together, a good life, no matter how hard we have worked to be healthy, wealthy, now let me use a Jamaican language, prosper us prosperity time being comfortable with friends and family and success at the workplace with our career according to Tim something will inevitably ruin it so my sisters and brothers as I bring this meditation to a close Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane with his close friends to pray. And his experience offers us some key lessons during this time of COVID-19. How we can cope with catastrophe when it strikes. Although some persons may be driven to the point of despair, to a place where the psalmist called, out of the depth, in this, the psalmist would say, out of the depth, O Lord, I cry to you. Many of our peoples are in that place called out of the depth. Some may have even given up on God. 
and have ceased believing. They see no hope on the horizon. No longer can they say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. However, God is not the direct giver of our coronavirus, nor of our suffering. And God takes no delight in human suffering. Indeed, most human sufferings are derived from other human corporate misbehavior. The arrival of COVID-19 speaks much more to humanity's failure to live right with the environment. We have created global ecological damages, pumping all these CO2 gases into the atmosphere. So many of our cities are polluted. Have you ever been to some of our towns? They are so dirty. And then we don't expect consequences? We treat our environment poorly and we still want to live right. Maybe we can get, learn something out of COVID-19. Our forced lockdown may very well be nature rejoicing, helping us to breathe better. In Gethsemane, the experience of Jesus in which he wrestled with God and confronted by the unexplainable challenges of life. However, like Jesus, who sought God's guidance with his prevailing, his never giving up prayer, so too we can encounter the God of all comforts who come alongside us in our times of suffering and pain, who, the God who comforts and heals us with his presence, the God who is not afraid of leprosy, is a God who is not afraid of COVID-19. This Jesus reaches out and he still touch the untouchable. We who have been giving God a six or a nine, COVID-19 may very well serve as a positive antidote to wake up out of our false sense of self-sufficiency and to realize that we are spiritually weaker than we thought we were. We have been caught worshiping God with our lips, but our hearts are far from him. May the God that Jesus prayed to in the garden of Gethsemane be our experience. May we too pray, Lord, if it is possible, take this cup away from us. Nevertheless, not our will, but yours be done. Like Jesus, who journeyed all the way to Calvary for our salvation, who experienced great suffering and pain and eventually death, but even in death, he did not surrender. Death did not have the last word on life. With the power of the God of life, he overcame death and the grave and lives again so that we all may live, as John 16 says, and all who believe in him will not perish but have fullness of life. We who are believers should therefore use the suffering that comes from the fallout of this coronavirus to refine and to be, re to be strengthened so that as we surrender ourselves to God, we can give ourselves to others. This closing meditation song aptly guides us for the week ahead. It says in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips that solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he is the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure that your anchor holds and grips that solid rock. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Dr. Roderick Hewitt, for those challenging, though inspirational thoughts in his reflection. I now invite you to join me in a prayer of intercession. Let us all pray. God of our hearts, we adore you. God of our hearts, we worship you. We praise you, bless you, bring you glory and honor. Lord, we want to thank you for having given your life for us sinful people. O oh Lord, when we remember the grief that we put you through, thanks be to God that you gave us, Lord, the victory over sin and death. Father God, we invite you into our situation as we grapple with this hurricane called COVID-19. Father God, of ourselves, we can do nothing. But we know that with Jesus aboard, we can weather any storm. When Jesus comes, 
all is changed. Because he has the power. He has the authority over all our situations. Lord, we commend to you those who have been infected with the CODIV-19 virus. We pray for your comfort and your healing. Lord, we commend to you those who are affected by this virus in one way or another. People losing their jobs, farmers losing their markets, and one big confusion, Lord, in our world. We commend them to you, Lord, and ask that you have mercy. Lord, we pray for our medical staff who tends to the sick, we pray, Lord, that you will guide them and guard them so that they don't become infected. And as they do this labor of love, we pray that they will not be weary in doing good. Father, we pray for our government who has the daunting task of dealing with our crisis situation. Pray, Lord, you will grant them wisdom from above. Give them the vision to make the right decisions as we grapple with coronavirus. Father God, we lift up our church to you. We pray that they will fill the gap as they are just ready for a time like this. We lift up our own minister, Reverend Anthony Chung, and his family. Lord, protect them. We humbly beseech thee. Father God, look down on our country. Look down on our world and help us to survive this situation. Good Lord, we know that you are a God of mercy. We know you are a God of grace. And we ask, Lord, that you intervene in our situation and make it right. But above all, we pray that your will for us be done. And may we come out of this serious virus situation much better than we were. Because you still stay. You make everything work for our good. And we're standing on your promises. So bless us now, Lord. We humbly beseech thee Hear our prayers and let our cry come unto you. As we say, Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. I also like to mention that for those of you who would still like to make your offerings as you, usual, as you used to on a Sunday, you can either put it in the bank account, the church's bank account, which you'll find at the back of an old program, or you can arrange to drop it off at the church office. And I invite you to join in our closing praise. And can it be? Sing with me, and can it be? And can it be?
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and with all whom you love, with all God's people everywhere, this day and always. Amen.